I want you to imagine for a second that you go into a coding interview and you don't succeed. Right? You go into a coding interview, you ultimately get an email from them later that day or the next day or the next week saying, hey, sorry, you didn't do well enough. Now, when you go into that interview and when you have that experience, how do you know whether you actually aren't ready for interviews or whether you just got unlucky? Right? There's lots of cases where you could go into an interview, you could be prepared for every possible thing that could come up. You could have spent months and months studying and still they bring up a question where it just doesn't click in your head. You don't think through it properly. You don't come up with an optimal solution. So how do you know whether you're doing the right things or whether you actually just ended up in a situation that you didn't see a problem that you were able to solve, right? How do we make that determination? And so in this video, I want to take you through a concept that I find really helpful for thinking about interview prep and thinking about both where am I now in my interviews, right? How ready am I for interviews? And also where do I need to be? How do I get from where I am now to where I need to be? And what does that process look like? So let me jump over to the iPad here and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So the concept here is a concept from a book called The Mental Game of Poker, which is called the inchworm strategy. And the idea here is that all interviews lay on a spectrum. Right? On one end of the spectrum, there's you doing really badly. There's a spectrum of like, I went into the interview and I completely failed, right? And there's the interviews where you did really, really well. So I'll call this like amazing. You absolutely nailed it. It was something that you already knew how to solve, you were able to do it really proficiently, and you impressed your interviewer. And most of the time what's gonna happen is that you're not gonna end up on either of these extremes, you're gonna end up somewhere in the middle. And when we think about this, we can draw a bell curve. Right? A bell curve, this is basically a normal distribution. We say that the average difficulty of an interview or our average ability is here in the middle of the bell curve. So sometimes we're gonna end up in this left side of the bell curve where we didn't do as well as we were hoping to. And other times we're going to end up in, on the right side of the bell curve where we do better than we expected to. And so we would expect that most of the time we're going to fall somewhere in this range, right? You know, bell curve, there's that like 95% range. And what we have to think about is every interview is not going to be the same, right? Every interview that we go into is not going to be identical. They're not all going to fall exactly in that midpoint as much as we want them to because we're going to be better at certain topics than others. We're going to be better at communicating about certain things or working through certain types of problems than we are others, no matter how much time we spend on stuff. There's always gonna be stuff that our interviewer could ask us that we don't know. And so the key is that we can't think about, there is always going to be this set of questions that they're gonna ask us that are gonna be in the low end of our range. And even more to the point, there's always gonna be the things that are like way down here right, where we just do terribly, we absolutely flub the interview. But as we're working on our interview prep, our goal is not to necessarily stop there from ever being anything bad because we can't do that. There's just a, you know, long tail. Like if we drew this out, there's this long tail that just goes off into infinity of all the things they could ask us. But it's to shift this average up as much as possible. If we can just shift that average up, then that means that we're going to do a little bit better every time we go into an interview. And on average, we're going to improve to the point where we might still get unlucky in an interview here or there, but ultimately we're going to set the odds in our favor so that we do see the result that we ultimately want to see. And so the question is, how do we do this, right? So we understand that all of our performance fits along this normal distribution, but how do we move this up? And this is where this concept of what he calls in the mental, uh, the mental game of poker, the inchworm technique comes into place. Because if you look at this bell curve, if you look at what we have here, you can see it kind of looks like an inchworm, right? It looks like an inchworm like walking along. And when we see an inchworm, how does an inchworm actually walk? Well, it starts, you know, like, I can, I can draw this better. It starts like this. And then what it does is it lifts up its front feet and it stretches out forward. Right? So it stretches out so it ends up like this. And then what it does is it lifts up its back feet and pulls them up again. So you end up back where you started or back in that same position that you started, but further forward. And so as we're thinking about our interview prep, we can follow this exact same strategy 
to move this bell curve, to shift this bell curve over to the right so that our average performance improves a little bit every time. So what does this mean? What this means is that what we're going to do is we want to start by eliminating the worst stuff. Right? And I kind of drew this backwards because really what we want to do is we want to start with the stuff that's going to cause us to fail our interviews, just straight up. Right? We want to start with the stuff that, okay, if I went into an interview and got asked this question, I would have no idea where to start. Because that's always going to be the worst case. If, we, if we're you know, over here somewhere, then we're gonna perform fine in the interview. So we don't need to worry about that yet. The first thing that we wanna do is pull this tail forward. If we can just pull, if you think about a bell curve, if we just pull this low end forward, what does that, the effect of that have? If we said that instead of this, we ended up with the bell curve, you know, it's lower here and then it goes up, what you can see is that, okay, well, we actually moved our average. We moved our average performance better just by fixing those things that we're really stuck on. And I, and I know this kind of sounds obvious, right? This sounds obvious that we want to fix the things that we don't know how to do. But what most people end up doing when they're doing their interview prep is that they focus all their time in this part here. They focus on the easy stuff, right? The stuff that they already kind of know because this stuff, is, this is not the fun part. This is not the fun part fixing those problems. But if you can fix those problems, if you say like, I'm really bad at recursion and you spend the time to get good at recursion, you don't have to learn any new skills, right? This is the key. You're not over here. If you reach out further, like in this step where you kind of reach out this way, you're learning new skills, you're building new uh, strategies that you can apply, but that's not actually going to help you to get better as much as just fixing the stuff that you already know. So when you're thinking about your interview prep, what I want you to start thinking about is not how do I learn new, something new, right? Every time I talk to people, they just want to go learn new things. They want to go learn new sorts of problems. They want to learn new techniques. They want to, uh, you know, learn new algorithms or new data structures. But the reality is that the best thing that you can do if you want to be successful is to just get really good at those basic things. Get really good at the things that you're struggling at because that's going to prevent there from being a situation where you go into your interview and you just fall flat on your face because you have no idea how to do that thing. So in conclusion, like really what I'm getting at here and really what I want you to start thinking about in your interview prep is one, every interview is going to be different, right? There is no absolute, I'm going to perform at this level every single time. So there's no perfect system. You can be ready for your interviews and still go in and fail an interview because they all fall in that normal distribution. But what we want to do is we want to minimize those cases where you're on the low end as much as possible. And we do that by building up those skills that we don't already have a strong grasp of, by making sure that we're really, really powerfully dialed in on those skills so that we can see success. And so with that, that's all I got for you today. If you found this helpful, please do give a like. It really does help the channel here. Um, and also, if you have not already, go over to bitebybyte.com slash training. You can check out our free training if you're interested in working with us and understanding more, you know, how you can really dial in these skills. That's a great resource. So go ahead and check that out. And I look forward to seeing everyone back here next week.